What were you talking about? Uh, Emil opened the discussion with this nice guy, um, like being nice guy and, and kind of not, well, then we sp it started to spin off from there. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah. And, uh, kind of, or what I was saying was that it, it kind of grows the being true to oneself as you progress on the path so that you, uh, what you kind of were avoiding maybe like things that cause discomfort um, in confrontations or such that you kind of instead um, compromise your own integrity because you want to avoid the conflict mm -hmm. you, that th those things start to disappear because you realize that being true to yourself also means setting up the boundaries so that you actually can be true to yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Helena, what you are speaking about, is it related to a certain bumi or is it so that in general, just when you, uh, when you progress, it's getting better or? I don't know. I haven't figured out if it's corresponding to a certain bumi, but I think it gets easier and easier the further you go. Maybe somebody else has pinpointed it to a specific location, but I, I can't say I can only say that it becomes easier and easier. Okay, I see. Yeah. To me, it has never been like a, uh, any of that stuff. Any stuff has was never uh, particular to certain Bumi. But uh, having said that, <clears throat> you know, the mind has, you can say, has. Um, kind of like two, you know, two kinds of lanes, two different kinds of frequencies. The other one is gross thought and emotion. The other one is subtle, where it's formless. So, but it's the same regardless if we are talking gross or subtle mind. It's the, it's the continuum of same stuff. It's just a different form, different, yeah, different form, different expression of the same stuff. But the point is that it, you're, you're working with the same stuff th throughout the whole, whole succession of boomies. So this is my experience. I, and I could never say that you know, at one point I got rid of this and at other point this. So I was working on with uh, working on uh, all of it the whole time from beginning to end. May I ask something? Yes. Maybe it can be also regardless of uh, um, what we are doing spirituality. What is my experience is um, with more age or the older I get, the more this is all just a story which has been told and then it's, it's mm -hmm. just more stuff and I'm so tired of all this that I'm just not, I'm not interested in it anymore. You mean like physical age? Uh, the, your microphone is off. Yeah, maybe. But I think this has also to do with, let me say, inner wisdom or how you ever want to tell. Because there is no, uh, there is no um, solution in it. There is no, 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 um, I'm missing the word. Um, when you, when you be on this horizontal line, and continue to to figure out um, whether you're gonna be nice or if you're gonna take the harmony or the disharmony or you're gonna go into the dispute or you're leaving yourself outside. It's just useless because it's about going vertical. I don't know how to explain it better. Ah yes yes okay okay. 
How do you feel? Do you have any uh, comments or questions about sessions we've already had? May I? So, uh, uh, Yeah, there were problems with the uh, sound. Uh, mm -hmm. There were so many bliss, really, after uh, the session. It was wow. Really, for me, it was wow. Mm -hmm. I was lying after the session, and when I was sitting uh, on the session, there were so many bliss. Uh, I can physically really feel it. And... Uh, on the lunch time, I, I was lying down too, and I can still feel this bliss charge. Or like mm. that. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> uh, sometimes it's really hard to feel. Uh, that's why I feel so exhausted. Some, yeah. Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like lifting a, the heaviest weights in the gym. Yeah. Uh, but my mind wasn't clear. So many stuff was uh, in there. Mm. Getting on the surface, I think, mm. during this bliss time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was really strong, really powerful. I never had that powerful Vajrasattva practice before. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the visualization was good, like, because more or less naturally, it kind of just fell down the Masida Bumis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, very nice. For me, it was also a very powerful uh, session and uh, also very blissful, like that heavy, heavy bliss, like a lot of stuff in the head. And uh, when I was lying down at some point, uh, that stuff didn't disappear. It just re revealed itself in a, in a bigger context. Like I'm lying down, there is still in the head. But I feel. Can you, say, can you do that once more? How was how was it in the head? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel in my body subtly. It's like uh, this one is strong, and body is like uh, strong and bright. This sensation, and uh, body is like on the background. It's like there is a bigger context, like the whole room, maybe even bigger, like. A spacious context mm, mm. body like legs arms chest and, and so on uh, slightly felt on this in this bigger context but this thing is still here it's just mm. not not in closing no not in, in closing it's it's kind of right yeah 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 <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Monica, please. This morning, the German friends uh, of the German part of the Sangha received an email from Ugi, and he suggested us if we want to tune in into the uh, retreat already, we can use the name, just the word Pemako, and chant it like mm -hmm. we do uh, the Guru Mala chanting to mm -hmm. tune in because he feels that the energy of the Sangha is very strong at the moment. And I just tried it. And that was the first time that I thought, hey, this might be nice, but I didn't feel anything, but it was a nice suggestion. Was someone here with us who tried this too? Um. Um, I don't know if, is there something special going on? Um, I guess it depends how you define special, but, but something, something, uh, uh, there was some discussion during the last couple of days and, um, some comments, uh, uh, I was thinking about some comments that a few people made and I think it's a, uh, you know, if and when we are sober and clear, as in uh, having recognition, this also makes us peaceful and grounded. No hassle, ah, uh, hassle, hassle. You know, <laughs> in in many sanghas, um, I've seen that things get silly sometimes. People maybe get a bit, what is that word, um, carried away. So th th things get a little silly. People forget that forget that basic peacefulness, basic groundedness. So, from that perspective, I don't think there's anything special going on in the Sangha. But of course, you know, there has been um, very significant events in our Sangha this year and will continue uh, continue happening, that there are people who finish their practice, meaning uh, finish their purification process and therefore graduate of a Dharma practice, uh, become fully realized. But uh, this shouldn't be something that is viewed as something that make us excited in the in a childish manner. Okay? So that getting carried away, oh, Buddhas in our Sangha, it's something special. No, 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 no. Don't be silly, don't be silly. So let's not be silly. <laughs> but regarding Pemako as a mantra, sure. Uh, but what is Pemako really? Tuning to this retreat, what does that mean? Well, sure, uh, it is possible to tune into retreat, like a Dharma event like this. Uh, but Pemako is a name that we use for Guru Rinpoche's Pure Land that in Tibetan is known as Zangdok Paldri. I'll write it in the chat window so you remember that. Uh, Zangdok Paldri. Zangdok Paldri in English is copper-colored mountain. Mountain that is copper-colored. And because it's a mouthful, Zangdok Palri. <laughs> Zangdok Palri Buddhism sounds impossible to uh, pronounce. So that's why Guru Rinpoche said, just say Pemako. 
<laughs> so Pemaco is a synonym, well, it's a alternative name for his pure land. And this is also the name of our Sangha. Um, but of course, you know, um, we are tantrics and um, we can learn about our mind, we can learn about the world, we can learn about tantric yoga by tuning in to different people, like we do in Bhumi Analysis, to different, um, let's say, sacred places, such as sacred mountains, old great temples. Um, we can learn by uh, tuning into Bhumi centers and so on. So maybe I would just say that, you know, there's a lot of material for our study and growth of Tantric Yoga and Tantric skills. And this is of course something that I've kind of been pissed off about it, to be honest, um, during the past couple of years because uh, regarding Bumi analysis, because people have relied on my skills so much that they haven't developed their own. And uh, it pisses me off because, you know, it's the, the Bumi model which can only be applied through energetic sensation and, and reading of those sensations. It's a, it's, a, it's a way of reading energy in a particular way. That is our path map. We have uh, books to support that, but Pemako practitioners will never understand the path if you don't learn to do Bumi analysis. So this point has completely been missed the past couple of years and I've been really angry and frustrated about it because, you know, if I happen to kick the bucket today or tomorrow, it might mean that the skill is lost again, like it was lost uh, over time in ancient times. Right? So, so, you know, my students, you all, you need to learn it, you need to study it. And you, it can be learned, won't be learned in a week or two. It needs uh, time and consistent effort over years to develop, to develop sensitivity so that you can say that, you know, now you really know this, now you really uh, know the boomies, like these tools are in your own pocket. Okay, so this is uh, really important and, um, you know, in Pemako Sangha is the only Sangha in the whole world who maps stages and attainments like we do. Isn't it? It's kind of not crazy to say that, but it's a fact. You know, there are other people like in healing, in Reiki, in... Um, um, different types of things who read energy and sense energy. But the way how we do it, it's a very specific and concise method. It's like a... the... what is the word? The... How do I say the the finesse, the details, the the genius, the um, the wealth and value of it is immense. It's a completely different story than uh, um, it. It's just uh, um, how should I say? It's a genius system. 
And um, I didn't invent it. I need to say it, that this guy here didn't in, in, invent it. I received it as a teaching from uh, Mahasiddhas. And by now, of course, having done thousands, I don't know, seven, eight thousand at least, if not more, Bumi analysis, um, I know very, very well that I know how the whole thing works. I have the tools in my pocket and I know for a fact that our Bumi model is exactly uh, the same know-how, the same knowledge, the same expertise that was sometime part of Buddhist teachings in the past and Tantric teachings. But the thing is that, you know, the whole knowledge and skill can disappear in one or two generations when it is a knowledge like ours. And this is what has made me pissed off because my students have relied on my skill, didn't haven't bothered to learn it themselves. Uh, and uh, if something happened to me, well, I've written down a lot of it. But if something happened to me, then it would be lost again. It is inevitable that sometime in future, uh, I don't know, maybe 100, 200, 500 years, uh, it will be lost again. It will disappear. This way of mapping um, stages of emptiness meditation. Um, but I would just... Um, uh, how should I say this? You know, if it happened in 20 years from now, I would come back from the grave to haunt all of you because I've done so much work to get it all together and to get the whole thing figured out that, uh, <laughs> you know, I've done a lot of work to put it all together. Yes, oh yes, then you all will be slapped. You have to come to Finland, make a queue at my door and one by one. <laughs> Kim, I, I get what you are saying, but I also, I think that one thing is that people actually genuinely struggle with understanding the booby model. Mm -hmm. Gaining some confidence, at least. I perfectly understand it. Um, perfectly understand it. Understand it. Uh, would you be able to say about your struggles a bit more specific? Um, well, I just I have, I have trouble understanding it. And I, I would say that I consider myself as somebody quite intuitive or that I, um, how should I say, like, I'm not the last person to understand such things, but still it's just very difficult. It's maybe because they are quite close to each other, like physically, I don't know if that's the problem. Um, have you received 13 Pure Land Meditations Empowerment from yes. me? You have? Yes. And have you done it, done the practice on your own? I've done, well, I must say not so much, but I've done it. Okay. Um, what you can try is that it begins to make sense. But b because, like I said, it's so... What is that word? It's uh, There is so much depth in it. There is so much, uh, it gets extremely subtle. So this requires uh, like a consistent study over a long period of time. In the beginning, it might seem like I can't, you know, I, I'm not able to notice any difference between any of the boomies. It's just one big um, messy thing doesn't you know you can't you might not be able to make what's head and what's the tail but you will you know i have 
you have received the instruction for 13 pure lung meditation so so do that go through the centers and each buddha one by one you keep doing that and it will at one point it will click okay. it did for me it did for me okay thanks May I ask, is it okay to replace uh, this practice you mentioned, uh, 13 pure land uh, jhanas? To, is it okay to, to practice it with a YouTube recording? You have a recording with empowerment. Mm. It, it yes, empowerment, but is it okay to, to practice it with the recording on? Yes, it is. And um, there are also some recordings like parts of Rainbow Body Yoga in YouTube. Um, so it doesn't really matter if there are people who haven't received the empowerment and who do it. But the thing is that <coughs> <coughs> both, especially with 13 Pure Land uh, practice and rain well, Rainbow Body Yoga also, if you if one hasn't received the empowerment even if you say the mantras it, it won't work it just won't so um, but yeah you can use the recording whether you or not you have the empowerment I'm sure that now that I, um, I well, I hope I made it clear in the Facebook Sangha, uh, as well as this discussion to make it clear that um, about this Bumi thing, Bumi analysis thing, and I'm sure that uh, you know many in our many in our Sangha will learn learn it as well as I have. So, um, but it's extremely fascinating. It's very fascinating. Uh, like yesterday I was talking, <coughs> I started this retreat by talking about uh, Guru transmission and that sensing uh, sensing energies sensing blessings really feeling them and then tasting how does it taste how does it feel how does it feel like you know that that experience this is this is uh, uh, in tantra it's called like internal tantra so you're not doing external practice chanting mantras visualizing you're not doing mudras you're not doing anything anymore you're feeling and this feeling sensing being with the sensation being with the blessing is internal internal uh, principle of tantra that takes us to the secret which is the basic state itself so so it is um as um, you know, learning about um, when, the, when we, when our clarity and our peacefulness, our settledness develops, develops with opening of bumis and with purification, you know, perfecting bumis little by little with purification pr practice. Um, this makes us able to perceive finer and finer things if the mind is messy there is stuff going on it's like a 
uh, highway traffic all the time, of course you won't be able to uh, notice and experience fine things, right? But when that clarity and settledness develops, then you start getting a hang of what is the genius of the Bumi model. Because then you start noticing that, oh, those two are actually it's very close together, but these are like different universes. I'm talking about Bumi centers, any of them. One compared to two, two to three, five to six, seven to eight, any two. So you realize that they are close, but they are like completely different worlds, completely different world systems. And they are. So uh, I just wanted to say that it takes some um, purification practice to get a hang of it, but then it can become a very, very fascinating study. It's like, uh, I imagine that uh, in any field of science, really, uh, when, you know, quantum physics, I have no, no clue at all about quantum physics, uh, <laughs> but you know, quantum physics is a hot word, right? It, it's like if you start listening to podcasts and, and interviews in the internet, quantum physics is, comes up here and there. But what I heard um, some time ago was that there's only like a handful of people in the world who really understand quantum physics and who can really uh, discuss about the subtleties and fineness of quantum physics in a way that the vast majority of scientists, physics and so on, scientists can't. So we are talking about that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, expert knowledge, that kind of fine details with the Bumi model. And I don't say that to scare you off, I'm saying that to motivate you. Because there is nothing else to Buddha nature. There is nothing else. This is the subject of internal study. And that's the immense beauty of it. And that's why it's important. You know, that's, it's all available to you. So you can make it your own. You can become an expert in Pemaco quantum physics. <laughs> All right, let's continue to practice. Spine up, right? Relax the shoulders. Relax the belly. Release the belly. Take breaths if you need. always for the sake of all beings. All beings in our own body-minds, beings such as anxiousness, jealousy, greed, anger,
May all beings in this body-mind be free. For the sake of freedom, liberty of all beings in the vast macrocosm. So what am I really, what are the instructions that I'm saying? We are wishing the highest good, liberation, freedom to all beings. Repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Oh, this opens up our self-based knot, K-N-O-T. This loosens the knot loosens it, loosens it, loosens it and reveals our true nature, our true heart, our true mind. So the way how I'm doing it is that I'm um, saying it with meaning, first of all. I'm not saying it plainly, uh, without meaning, without energy. I mean it when I say it. And that's what makes the energy move. That's what makes our, our mind react. This is why I say that body, body chitta needs to be genuine. It needs to be felt. In the beginning it's also okay to pretend that you care. This will get the juices flowing, get the locomotive into motion. And if you pretend in the beginning you realize that, oh, it really works, so then it becomes genuine. So it is crucial to again work with energy that something really happens in us. There is no such thing as energy work without sensations, without energy being felt. That's the difference between bad Tantra and good Tantra, nonsense Tantra and proper Tantra. May all beings be free. May all beings be happy, truly happy, smiling with every cell of their bodies. radiating the love and kindness of our basic nature. May all beings radiate natural goodness, basic goodness. May all beings be free free of suffering, free of pain, free of existential anguish.
for the sake of all beings, may self-delusion disappear in this body-mind, my body-mind. May the mistaken false sense of self be released, liberated, for the sake of all beings. May I be blessed, may we all be blessed by the Buddha who we really are. May we be blessed by Buddhas and Mahasiddhas of all times and places. May our body minds be flushed with blessings of love, kindness, clarity and peace. May we be full with bliss. Let's do some tantric visualization to really, uh, what is the word, to really tweak it up so your body is sitting upright and above our bodies is the pillar of Bhumis and the Mahasiddha Bhumis. 11, 12, 13 are there five, six meters above the crown. Feel how there is a descent, downpouring of pure, graceful light and energy through the crown into the body just to receive the downpour of grace and light
just receive like sitting under a waterfall pure light showering down into the body into the tissues organs physical cells receiving and taking in the downpour of blessings So we are actively present and actively aware that we have this experience, that we feel the energy, feel the blessings pouring down from the Mahasiddha Bhumis. And then when we scan, feel the different parts, areas of the body, we simply are aware of it like that. That's all. This is the secret of Tantric Yoga. Again, mingling with the energy.
just like we did before before lying down let's chant the uh, mantras mantric syllables of the Mahasita Bhumis ah excuse me ah ba hu ah for 11 ba for 12 hu for 13 <clears throat> so we'll just send long syllables for one or two minutes <clears throat> inhale ah ba Good. And then again, lie down. All right. Take a moment to come back sitting. Is Jonathan there? Jonathan, can you lead vows and prayers? Sure. Uh, give you one second. Uh, what what yeah. did you say? Oh, one second. Sorry. I vow to liberate all sentient beings. I vow to end all self-based confusion. I vow to exercise the Dharma that frees. I vow to attain the great perfection. I vow to liberate all sentient beings. I vow to attain 
and all self-based confusion. I vow to exercise the Dharma that frees. I vow to attain the great perfection. I vow to liberate all sentient beings. I vow to end all self-based confusion. I vow to exercise the Dharma that frees. I vow to attain the great perfection. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in his pure land. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in his pure land. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in his pure land. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. May all beings be free. May all beings be free. May all beings be free. All beings are free. All beings are free. All beings are free. May all beings receive my accumulated merit. I dedicate the merit to the refuge and to all sentient 
could be And finishing with the bow. to add a little prayer and blessings on behalf of Gwen's mother Hazel who is in who is in hospital may she receive the merit of our today's practice may she receive blessings of all the masters mahasiddhas buddhas to help her in her, in her condition. Let's join our hands again.
Thank you, Jonathan.
some time ago in Facebook Sangha, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was discussion that uh, the recent retreats have been difficult to follow uh, for those who haven't been around for long. So has it been easier today to follow, to keep up? Tell me, thumbs up or thumbs down. Has it been easier? Okay. Heck, I think that's the first time when there's not a single thumb down. <laughs> Good. Alright ladies and gents, thank you for today and we will continue tomorrow, okay? Thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.